Hey guys, it's another video from Mr. Mitchell. Today in social studies, we're going to start talking about Europe. Europe is the first continent we're going to spend a good amount of, a good amount of time on here in sixth grade social studies. Now, there's no way we'll be able to cover all the history and geography and government and culture of Europe in the amount of time we have. Keep in mind, you'll probably have classes later on in your career that will really get in depth to this. But we are going to touch upon what our sixth grade standards would like for you to know. And some of the things to know are listed in the one through seven up here. Now, as you notice the one through seven up here, you'll see we have a lot of elements of geography. Seas, rivers, peninsulas, mountain ranges, and so on. Your standards ask that you not only know about them, but that you can identify them on a map. So while you have to write down the one through seven and notes for this homework, please pay attention whenever I talk about them on the map. So you will be able to point them out on a map when asked to. For many years, the fastest way to go from place to place in Europe was by water. You can see on the map below that we have water that surrounds Europe to the north, to the west, and to the south. So if you were going long ways in Europe, you probably went by water. And this was especially true because we had in southern Europe lots and lots of mountains. So traveling and walking over mountains would just, just was long and laborious. Uh, over the ocean, through, past the water is probably the best way that you will find. Now, speaking of some of that water, I'm going to tell you what the big sea is to the south of Europe. It's called the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is this sea right in here. That borders Europe to the south. Now this little land mass right below Europe is Africa. So you could say the Mediterranean borders or separates Africa from Europe. Now there are many rivers in Europe, but we're going to talk about three primary rivers. First primary river comes from the Netherlands and cuts down through Germany here and actually goes a little farther. It's called the Rhine. The Rhine River. This is the Rhine River that cuts down through Germany right here. There's another river that we'd like to talk about called the Danube, which is farther east. Most of it's farther east. And the Danube comes from comes down the bottom south of Germany, cuts through Austria here, and ends up bordering countries going out to the east area here. And a third one we want to talk about is the Volga River. Now the Volga River is not in your standards to be f located, but just know that you do have a primary river who cuts through in the Russia here and ends up coming down toward the sea that direction, much farther east. Anyway, those are some of the big rivers in Europe, and if uh, now we can talk, river these rivers just themselves cover thousands of miles. There are two large peninsulas here in Europe. One peninsula is down here. This peninsula has Spain, it's the big country here, and Portugal, which is the little country right over here. This peninsula is the Iberian Peninsula. And it's one of the things you need to locate on a map, Iberian Peninsula. Another peninsula we have is this really, really big peninsula way up to the north. It's called the Scandinavian Peninsula. Scandinavian Peninsula. Scandinavian Peninsula, of course, much farther north than the Iberian Peninsula. <clears throat> a 
Let's talk about a little bit about mountain ranges. One of the mountain ranges I want to, I think is very important to discuss is the Alps. The Alps are a very tall mountain range that separate Italy from the rest of Europe. Now, when I say these different mountain ranges, it's not like the mountains just stop when I stop drawing. Almost all of southern Europe is, is very mountainous terrain, but the ones that are just north of Italy are called the Alps. Now we have some other mountain ranges that are just bordering countries. Well, one of them specifically is the Pyrenees. Now the Pyrenees is just here separating France and Spain. Now, you can probably imagine that the mountain ranges probably contributes to so many different cultures here in Europe. You can imagine if there was a time before you had modern transportation, this area right in here, though fair, Spain, France, and Italy, though fairly close on the map, uh, you just wouldn't get a chance to visit those places as often because of the mountains. Uh, as a result, you have three different languages, Spanish, French, and Italian, uh, three different completely, three completely different cultures just right in this area because of those mountains. You didn't have many people going back and forth and kind of spreading, infusing their culture onto these other places. Another set of mountains I need to talk about are the Ural Mountains. Ural is spelled U R. A L. The Ural Mountains are not quite as tall and they happen to border not a different country but they border a different continent. Asia is off here to the east and Europe of course is off here to the west. Now I said most of this area is in fact mountainous but I said it's, it's the southern area which is very very mountainous here. You do have this big section from part of France all the way over, which is called the Great European Plain. I'll abbreviate it because you have it up here. Great European Plain covers a lot of northern Europe. Now you probably know enough about geography to know that you can have better farmland on plains than you can in mountains. And that is exactly true here at the Great European Plain. That's where you find the better farmland. Uh, there are some large cities at trading areas across this plain. Uh, Paris, which is in France. Uh, Berlin, which is in Germany. Warsaw, which is in Poland. Moscow, which is in Russia. I'm not going to label those right here. But those are some large cities that stem from being trading areas across this plain. Now, there is another uh, body of water that I need to mention. body of water I need to mention is right here between the United Kingdom and the rest of Europe. It's called the English Channel. And I'll abbreviate because you have it up there. Now, the English Channel here, oh, it is known to be very uh, choppy, known to be very windy. And it's something that is currently you actually have a tunnel that you can drive between the United Kingdom and France. Uh, it is called the Chunnel because it's a tunnel crossing the English Channel. There's a little section in the book we'll end up reading, which is a um, tells you a little bit more about the channel, but I just kind of wanted you to know where it was. Now I noticed that I end up skipping something, the Gulf Stream. As far as latitude and longitude, Europe is very high up on the world map. In fact, if you were to look straight over same latitude and go to uh, where the Americas are, you would be about mid to northern Canada. Now for us, once we get way down here in the northern U.S., it's very, very cold. And it's incredibly cold here in Canada. But it's not so cold along the coast here 
in Europe. Now here's why, because of the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is a warm water current that comes from the tropics. Let's see what color we're going to go with the Gulf Stream. Well, let's go green here. It's a warm water current that comes from the tropics that actually brings warm wind and warm current up to areas in Europe. Oh, I didn't realize it would switch off like that. But it actually cuts up through there. And as a result, you get warmer water off the coast of Spain and France and United Kingdom and even up a little bit up into this area in Norway. So where if you have straight across going to Canada, it would be very icy. It's usually not that bad in Europe until you get to the, to the upper reaches of it. Just checking my notes to see if there's anything I have left out. And it doesn't look like I have. Oh, except at the end here. Uh, this current uh, brings warm water. But the mountains also kind of protect southern Europe, especially from the cold winds that come from the North Pole. Because you probably can imagine the North Pole is not too terribly far up here. North Pole's up here and you have winds that would be coming down. But these mountainous areas kind of protect some of the southern areas of Europe from these winds. So some of the northern areas get a little Gulf Stream. Southern areas get wind. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be cold cold, uh, cold temperatures here, but you are, in fact, going to get some breaks from the wind because of the Gulf Stream and because of the mountainous areas there. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about geography of Europe.